20 years ago, we started um, an open house called Science Night. Uh, several instructors got together. Uh, Bill Shapiro would accompany me to uh, North Bay scientist meetings and on the way home from one of those we talked about it and thought that that would be a, a interesting thing for us to do and great for the general public to come to our school and see our great facilities and uh, learn something about science. So way back then uh, we had uh, biology things set up, we had geology things, Pat Green, uh, the uh, geology instructor, had an open house in his geology lab. They even had uh, rock cutting at that time and, and were showing people how to do uh, lapidary uh, work. And then we had our telescope set up and I gave an astronomy lecture. Uh, in the classroom and, and uh, my students ran telescopes out uh, on the back porch. And slowly but surely, year after year, more faculty members uh, have joined in on Science Night and we've even extended it from the sciences on across the campus that it, it truly does include everybody on the campus. And it's, it's neat to see the faces of kids uh, come in from all ages, young, not even having started school yet, to uh, people that uh, are coming back uh, to school after they've retired. And uh, it's really fun to share that knowledge. What's been frustrating is sometimes it'll rain on science night and then you, you can't use the telescopes or it'll be foggy. Uh, but we've, uh, I can remember several nights when we had uh, beautiful evenings and had a video camera on the back of the telescope so it was on a TV screen so instead of one person watching uh, literally dozens of people could crowd around the big screen TV and watch the transit of Mercury. Uh, one night we had an eclipse, a lunar eclipse and uh, people were able to watch through our telescopes. Uh, we've had some notable speakers, um, some professional astronomers. Uh, we had uh, the Shoemakers, Carolyn and Eugene Shoemaker, come for a science presentation here at College of the Redwoods. And uh, Eugene Shoemaker, who has passed away, was just a fantastic astronomer, both he and his wife uh, working together, and, and they are the ones that discovered Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 that crashed into Jupiter uh, in the 90s. Um, and uh, it was spectacular to watch, and they came and talked about their discovery. Uh, so we've had a lot of things go on over the years here at College of the Redwoods, and uh, a lot of them have been really spectacular. We started, actually started with this 20 years ago, and I'm going to do it again. Um, you can use dry ice in such a way that you can form in front of everybody and in your hands a comet and it has the characteristics for like a half hour 45 minutes it has the characteristics of a comet out in space only you can carefully hold it in your hand and it's pretty spectacular to see made before your eyes. And I, I did that when we started 20 years ago and, and they've asked me if I would do that again for this science night and, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, and <laughs> hopefully it will go well. Um, I've done it for all my classes for 28 years as I taught here. Of course, I'm always amazed at uh, my colleagues with, with their setups that they do. Um, and uh, the bubble, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the uh, bubbles, but young, if you're too tall, this won't work for you, but young children can stand in the middle of this circular bubble bath out of the liquid 
and uh, you use a big hoop and you literally can pull a bubble up over their head if, if you're doing it just right. Give a twist and it closes the bubble so they are enclosed in a bubble for a brief time. Howling gummy bears is a unique experience. <clears throat> it is truly a gummy bear, uh, the candy, gummy bears, and I forget the liquid that's in the the test tube, but and I forget, I mean, uh, I don't try this at home, uh, but there's a liquid in the test tube, or you put the gummy bear in the test tube and then pour the liquid in. I think they drop the gummy bear into the liquid and it uh, creates a, a bright light as well as howling noises. I mean, weird, weird screechy sounds. Uh, as the sugars in the gummy bear, I guess, are converted into energy rapidly. We had a previous chemistry instructor, Miles Mackey, would do volcanoes. He would set off uh, volcanoes, and I think even one year, maybe he did an explosion, uh, but not indoors. I think he took the stuff outdoors, and, and, and I'm not sure what he did, but it was intended to explode, and it did with a loud noise. But I've, I'm not sure, I wanna say he did it at least twice, but, uh, but maybe after the first time they wouldn't let him do it anymore. <laughs> but we've had a good time in the past 20 years.